oh, we got this one. This is interesting, in it? Uh, so, of course, you know, I've kind of covered a lot of the news concerning Chris D'Elia's unfortunate demise, uh, you know, off the back of some of some unsullied, um, unsavory, let's say, allegations regarding some of his uh, extramarital affairs. And so far, it's been a bit quiet on that front when it comes to Crystal Leo. I guess, you know, he's taking necessary time he needs away from the limelight to, I guess, work on himself. And for the most part, maybe he's just utterly embarrassed and just doesn't want to put his head out um, from the rafters until he's kind of come to grips with what he is as a person and all that sort of good stuff. You know, who knows? Who knows what's going on there? But for the most part, his friends in the comedy world have been pretty quiet in terms of defending him or saying anything to sort of support in public. I guess it's understandable, right? A lot of these people that work in Hollywood have essentially, you know, given their souls, given their entire lives to making it. And now they've got some semblance of, you know, popularity, notoriety and infamy and fame, whatever it may be. They're not going to they're not about to let a person who they would might have thought was competition, you know, essentially lead to them losing the opportunity. So they're going to do what they can to hold on to it, whether that means staying quiet, throwing them under the bus. Those things are completely understandable, right? We're all mature adults here. Some people make decisions, you know, based on the uh, benefit of their career. Some people have families, you know, not judging anybody. But um, sometimes you think when some people do come out and defend you, you sometimes think to yourself, you know what? I don't want you defending me. I don't think necessarily that's what I was doing and you're making it worse. And I think this is a really good example. So Eric Griffin, um, which is another weird one because I wouldn't necessarily think Eric Griffin was, you know, one of Chris D'Elia's good friends. I don't know. I never really got that impression. If anything, I got the impression that maybe Chris was essentially, you know, I wouldn't say humoring him, but like maybe big timing him in a way right i think i remember him going on this podcast maybe once and you know it being really awkward in terms of eric griffin bringing up how much times he's asked him to come on the show and him saying no but you know how it is then i could assume when chris was on fire someone like Eric griffin trying to get him on the show was like you know i don't need to come on your show i do good numbers you know what i mean your platform isn't going to do anything for my career blah 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 so to hear him now come out and say you know my good friend and support chris and try and defend him sounds weird and it sounds even weirder because when you hear some of his rationale, you, you some you sometimes feel to yourself, you know what, you know, we're all kind of asking his friends to step up and say something. Maybe it's better to just keep their mouth shut. So this is Eric Griffin's way of defending Chris D'Elia. And again, um, I do not endorse these comments. So just keep an eye on what he says here. Very, very sketchy. Uh, no, nah, man, you suck. You're being a selfish mofo. I think you... I think you love the thrill of having two girls more than you love either of them. You're having fun now, but it's not going to end well. I mean, that will blow up in his face, you know? And it was great. I got this message from, uh, I've gotten like some messages uh, from girls who are like this one girl said, let me find it. Oh, she says, in the name of females around the globe, thanks for telling fuck boys that they suck. You know, someone made me think though. I was like, Hey, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the F boys. Um, you get dinged for saying the F word too much. So we'll call them the F boys now. You know what the problem is? Like, people don't take responsibility for the creation of this, for the creation of, like, I love listening to girls. I love, because Rachel listens to these girl podcasts where all the girls talk like this. Hey, guys, what's up? I don't know what's going on today. My hair, and I don't know. They all talk like that. It's so annoying. Anyway. <laughs> But they all talk about F boys all the time. Oh, they're so. Here's the problem: you support them. The problem y'all have with fuck boys is that's the ones you want. You want to be with them, and you're mad they're not conforming to what you think they should be doing. Now, is Eric Griffin a little bit annoyed that he was getting overlooked in his uh, previous single life for these F boys? Hmm. You know, there's plenty of guys out there. There's plenty of good guys out there. There's plenty, but nah, they're not those guys. They're not those guys. They're attractive. There's la- they're ladies' men. There's they're 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 macho, chauvinistic. Here they're comes like, you know, they got a lot of women in the stall, and y'all are one of them. And you're mad, but you're are you surprised? <laughs> like, are you really shocked that uh, a dude that has like so many options is taking advantage of them? And like you feel like you got got the problem is the level that the the minimal level of 
you feeling special, you need to raise that. Is That's to me is it the problem. Whatever basic level you go, well, let me give you an example. Real world example. Here comes a mess. So my buddy, you know, my friend Chris D'Elia, he's gone through all this stuff. He's had all these allegations against him. And friend? Then there's just people that... Do you remember the episode of him and Rick Glassman where he essentially, you know, without saying it in so many words, you know, called <laughs> Chris a creep, right? And now suddenly he's his friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're coming out with stories about him. I don't condone bad behavior. I think Chris, uh, you know, he he was he's a chauvinist. Okay, he was a ladies' man. He loved being with ladies, and he, he let it get out of hand. All right. But that being said, some of these girls, I was like, they they wanted to be with him. Okay, that's kind of like him saying they kind of deserve it, isn't it? I don't know if that's the kind of message I want to be sending out there. Do you reckon Chris can? Do you reckon Chris vouches for this message? Do you think he endorses this? One of his friends coming and saying that, you know, the girl sort of deserved it because he's a, what, a chauvinist male pig, quote unquote, that they deserve to be taken advantage of. They deserve to be uh, uh, harassed. <laughs> they deserve to be treated pretty poorly. And again, like I said previously, right, some of the allegations against Chris aren't that bad in, you know, in isolation. But when you look at all the stories, what you basically see is somebody that didn't have that much regard for his female fan base, you know, tried to basically smash and dash as many of them as possible. And because they were all of, a, you know, varying ages of innocence, it made them look really bad because you're meant to be, especially if you're the older person in this relationship and you're the dude, you're meant to take some ownership in terms of making sure that the person you're dealing with feels some level of comfortability, right? Trying to show them a good time and just generally not trying to be a dick. And that's basically where he basically let, he basically let himself down, right? He wouldn't go out of his way to try and make this girl feel comfortable. Some of the accounts of his friends acting weird as well kind of added to it, you know, kind of like a boy's um, crew that was essentially just trying to make sure they're racking up their numbers, you know, no problem with that whatsoever. Rack up your numbers. But if you're going to rack up your numbers, you know, you got to treat the girls with some level of molecule of respect. And unfortunately, he did it and he came by him in the ass. But to sit there and say that, you know, these girls deserved it because they're going after, you know, bird brain girls going after bird brain men. Sometimes somehow each person deserves it is odd. Yes. Do, did they both play an equal part in the crappy encounter that they had probably in some in some respects i'm not uh, i'm not a fan of these whole like power dynamics or oh, he has a power he has this like nah not really um i think it's just sloppy encounters you know are sloppy encounters but of course i still do think the onus should be on the adult right the adult should be the one taking co the control taking the reins and ensuring that the other person feels comfortable the other person's okay right making sure they're safe making sure they're having a good time all that good stuff because if that happened i'm pretty sure chris doesn't find himself in this situation because i think it was a bit of an open secret that you know he liked to um get down and enjoy himself but if he was able to treat them with some level of respect and just be a decent gentleman for you know a short period of time even if it was just for the time that they were together that would go that would have gone a real real long way but again this is maybe the perspective of somebody in eric griffin's case not to be mean to him but he hasn't i, I would imagine he didn't really get that many girls prior to doing comedy so now that he has uh you know um been fortunate enough to maybe you know touch some very attractive females his whole um perspective of things has kind of immediately been skewed and now he's looking at it through the lens of somebody you know who has you know just attained some level of notoriety that's allowed him to basically attract a higher caliber of females but this is a very very odd defense of your friend that's been accused of a crime that on paper looks really bad he, he he he's they want you they wanted him so they they pursued him so anyways my point is i saw this one story on one of these things where the girl's talking about him and she says i he made me feel special uh and i drove from texas to california to see him what hold on at what point did you feel special on the 10 hour drive from Texas to California. So whatever attention. Yo, this is sounding weird, isn't it? This is sounding super suspect. Now, if you were a conspiracy theorist, you'd say this kind of defense coming out of nowhere is, could be one thing, right? It, it, 
on, on the fair point, it could be just his way of trying to get back in the good graces of a Chris who still holds a bit of clout, I guess, in the city of Los Angeles, right? You want to just make sure you're aligning yourself with him. Everyone's moving. So it's maybe a good power play to stand yourself next to a guy like him. If he comes back, obviously you can be the guy to interview him first, blah, 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 blah. blah. Or someone could say that defending somebody this strongly about such a, you know, cut and dry, slimy thing that he did, maybe is a prerequisite in terms of him probably having his own skeletons in his own closet regarding some of his act past actions because he's mentioned in prior other prior podcasts that he regrets some of the earlier encounters that he'd had with women that were consensual but you know some of the flirtings he kind of regretted some of the things that he said when he was trying to shoot his shot so maybe this is him trying to overcompensate for that but regardless this is a very very odd defense he was giving that made you feel special enough to get in the car and drive and again again i don't live in the states but is texas 10 hours away from california i don't think it is really is it 10 hour drive it doesn't seem like it and even if it is i'd, I'd assume just much like in the uk people would go as far as they want for a bit of you know a bit of hanky panky people would travel miles it's not very it's not um it's not indicative of the person's lack of uh mental acumen that they're gonna be able to jump in their car and travel somewhere to hook up with somebody especially somebody with no right especially somebody with a name that's not an indication that they're dumb or that they're somehow you know short-minded they might just thought hey this person who i've met online who i kind of look up to is essentially inviting me down to a show right to come and sit in their green room to have a vip seat to go back to their hotel room why not i got nothing else to do i jump in my car and go down there put on my cute dress and have a bit of fun now of course once the event rolls out and you know it, it turns out to be a bit of a shit show it's a different story but i don't necessarily think that's still a reason for you know chris is what allegedly be sitting in between two girls whipping out his piece do you know what i mean that's not the vibe <laughs> That's let me tell you, let me tell you, the special one, she getting flown out, okay? The spe and check this out, even that one ain't special, cause he gonna use miles, cause he travels a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. This is sounded odd from Eric. And again, I, I like the guy. I don't know what this defense is about with Chris. Um, I get, maybe there are friends behind the scene that we didn't know about. Is this the first I've even heard of them talking to this in this extent? Because again, last time I heard Eric talking about Chris, he was essentially burying him for some of the stuff that he'd done prior. So maybe things have changed. Who knows? But let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think Eric Griffin was poss quite possibly the worst defender of some of Chris's actions? Or do you think what he said was fairly, you know, made a lot of sense and maybe does help to put things into context? I'd love to know what you think in the comments below.